When you're at your home, sir, do you lock your doors? Congressman, thank you very much for your service mm -hmm. in our military. It's the highest form of service. Thank you. Do you lock your doors at your home? Congressman, um, I take care of the safety of my family. Understood. And we in the Department of Homeland Security work every day to protect the safety and security of the American people. So you would agree. And so you come up here and you blame the former president, and they say that they've gutted the immigration system. You blame Congress for not acting. But you know what? These numbers weren't here for Obama. They weren't here for Trump. But they seem to be here for you. So you like to blame other people for your failures in not doing your job. And quite frankly, the American people want to know, how qualified are you to even carry out your mission? Because everybody else seems to indicate, from local law enforcement to sheriffs to ranchers to farmers to citizens on the border, when I ask them, is the border more secure, they say resoundingly no. And that's on your watch, sir. Without you. A country without borders, sir, is not a country at all. A home without a roof and a home without a door, sir, is not a home at all. I have three young children at my home. They're all under the age of four years old. And my home is secure because I lock it up every single night because I care about their safety. It's actually the number one role of our federal government is to keep our citizens safe. I'm a combat veteran. I'm willing to give my life for that. West Point guy, flew Apaches in Baghdad, and safety is something that's paramount to me. It's actually the reason why I'm in this room right now is to figure out ways to keep our citizens safe. So you would agree, so you would agree that the American public should be afforded the exact same level of safety and security that you provide for yourself and your own family. That is what 260,000 people dedicate their careers to. Understood, sir. Can you tell me the number of unaccompanied minors who have crossed our southern border during your tenure as secretary? Very pleased to provide that data to you, Congressman. Okay. I've also heard that there are proponents of this administration that say that the fentanyl is coming across our southern border is coming through legal ports of entry. Does that mean that no fentanyl is being smuggled across our border other than legal ports of entry? Congressman, um, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection data um, evidences that more than 90 percent of the fentanyl that enters this country is coming through the ports of entry. So, the, so, that so, you, so that means there, that there are other parts of the border where fentanyl is pouring into our country. That is precisely why we have dedicated increased resources, both personnel and technology, to interdict more fentanyl in these past two years than in prior years. So I hear that, but I'm really speaking for the American public and the people that are in my district. That's not what we're seeing because we're seeing an increased number of people being murdered by fentanyl every single day. You understand these numbers, correct? Oh, I do, and Congressman, that, those numbers have been escalating for more than five years. But they've escalated exponentially during your tenure. Chip Roy went through these numbers. I was sitting here watching. I'm actually appalled at just how much this has happened. It is a tragedy, the, the devastation that fentanyl wreaks on our communities, and I look forward to working with you and with all of the members of this committee in addressing this challenge. This requires a united effort. This is not a partisan issue. Um, but unfor this unfortunately, is unfortunately, sir, unfortunately, sir, it's become a partisan issue. And I feel like we on this side are the ones that are truly trying to defend the lives of our fellow Americans. Switching gears on this one. This, sir, this woman is Kamala Harris. She's the current vice president of our country. She's also the border czar. Now, that was dubbed by your boss. You see, on March 21st, 2021, President Biden tasked Vice President Kamala Harris with solving the border crisis and finding the root causes of illegal immigration because, as Biden said, she is the most qualified person to do the job. I'd like to make a motion to submit this transcript of Joe Biden's March 24th press conference to the record, Mr. Chairman. So moved. It's been 855 days since Joe Biden named Kamala Harris the border czar. Has she solved the root, the root cause of illegal immigration, in your opinion? Congressman, you have mischaracterized the vice president's role. The vice president is a No, 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 I have not mischaracterized. Actually, that was the job that was given to her by the president of the United States of America. Congress, How did I mischaracterize that? Congress, Congressman, 
the vice president. Okay, that's fine. So she has not solved the issue. I think that's actually pretty clear. And I think my colleague, Chip Roy, did a very good job of articulating that. I want to go to my next topic. And this is something that the American public is really frustrated with because it's, it's been brought to my attention. And I think I've known, known it for a very, very long time. But for those who are not watching, the Secret Service is an agency that is within the Department of Homeland Security. This has been the case since March 1st, 2003. Now, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you're aware that cocaine was found by Secret Service in the White House a couple of weeks ago. Is that right? Yes. According to Secret Service, marijuana was also found in the White House twice last year, twice. And we don't know who brought the drugs into the White House, which is the most secure building on earth. And if we can't secure the White House, then how can we secure the border? And without proper leadership, I am so fearful that we have turned our beloved White House into a trap house. And the American public deserve more, far, far more than that, sir. Thank you for your time. I yield back the rest. Gentleman, gentleman yields back. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, I have listened both in here and in, in my office today, uh, your testimony uh, before this committee. And I think the frustration that I have as the cleanup crew at the very end of this committee is that you seem to ver answer very eloquently all the questions that the other side of the aisle pose. But when posed with questions, specific questions, about the border on this side of the aisle, you seem to not have, you seem to dance and dodge, as Ms. Hageman talked about, uh, the true answers that you, you talk about, uh, you, you filibuster, if you will, what people really are asking. And these, are, these aren't questions that, that are hatched out of uh, some think tank. These are questions that our citizens have because they see what's going on. You know, what's remarkable to me since day one of this administration, you've terminated construction of the border wall. You restricted the ability of immigration officers to deport aliens who violate U.S. law. You terminated the MPP, the Remain in Mexico policy, despite people on the ground talking about how successful that it was. You abused parole authority to release illegal aliens en masse into the United States um, and, and creating categorical categorical parole programs in violation of the ANA's case-by-case -case basis. You refuse to follow federal law requiring aliens to be detained during the pendency of their asylum proceedings. You terminated asylum cooperative agreements with Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. You refuse to comply with the provisions of the INA that require the detention of asylum seekers. You cut, out, you cut out immigration judges, ICE attorneys, and the process of the asylum system itself. You support sanctuary city, city policies by giving them grants. You implemented until it was enjoined a 100-day moratorium on alien removals. You have misused, as has been talked about here, the CBP-1 app that has institutionalized mass parole and release policies in this country. It's been described as a shell game. Pretty pretty fairly stated, that you otherwise shift things around, you, you create definitions within your department that you think that are appropriate, you create law, which isn't your function, uh, and then you come before Congress and you say that everything is fine. Well, we've been to Yuma, Arizona, sir, um, and we've seen the devastation down there. We've talked to people. Seventy sheriffs just last year said that there is no border at all. We simply have no border left in Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, and Texas. That's the National Sheriff's Association. You've been held to account by courts. Texas v. Biden, DHS's position, quote, position that the crisis at the border is not largely of their own making because of their more lenient detention policies is divorced from reality and belied by the evidence. Florida versus the United States in the nor Northern District of Florida, quote, the Biden administration have effectively turned the southwest border into a meaningless line in the sand and little more than a speed bump for aliens flooding into the country by prioritizing alternatives for detention over actual detention and by releasing more than a million aliens into the country. Uh, real quick, let's play a video. Crisis on the border that just keeps getting worse. These are live pictures of Del Rio, Texas. Uh, town that borders Mexico, where almost 9,000 migrants are currently camping out. Government data showing there were more than 220,000 encounters with migrants along the border last month, the highest number in 22 years. 
Law enforcement leaders from federal, state, and local agencies announced Tuesday an unprecedented two-month-long fentanyl enforcement surge along the southwest border that resulted in the seizure of more than 4,700 pounds of fentanyl. Fentanyl being pushed through the desert around El Paso is up more than 355 percent compared to last year. For the first time, fentanyl is being smuggled between the ports of entry. There have been more than 200 people on the right, FBI ahead, terror that, watch crisis on the border that just keeps getting worse. So the numbers don't lie. 5.6 million illegal immigration or illegal alien encounters, 1.5 million known gotaways, more than 2.2 million illegal immigrants, aliens into this country, meaning that 3.6 million illegal aliens are in this country since the start of your tenure. That's astronomical. 160 countries, the people on the terror watch list that we know about, 140 just this year, it's at an all-time high. So, look, this, 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 doesn't, this doesn't lie. These are the stats, Mr. Secretary. And so you come up here and you blame the former president, and they say that they've gutted the immigration system. You blame Congress for not acting. But you know what? These numbers weren't here for Obama. They weren't here for Trump. But they seem to be here for you. So you like to blame other people for your failures in not doing your job. And quite frankly, the American people want to know, how qualified are you to even carry out your mission? Because everybody else seems to indicate, from local law enforcement to sheriffs to ranchers to farmers to citizens on the border, when I ask them, is the border more secure, they say resoundingly no. And that's on your watch, sir. With that, I yield. Gentlemen's time has expired. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman, if we could... Um Maybe just wait till the sign's taken down.